Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a great week and is looking forward to a good class. Hi, Marjorna. Hi, Creation. Uh, hi, Irfana. Welcome, students. Hi, Honey. Hi, Kyber. Good to see our members. In this class, everyone, we are going to be uh, doing IELTS reading, and I'm going to discuss what you need to do uh, to meet the band nine requirement, which basically means getting almost a perfect score. Uh, you can only get one wrong in the entire reading section. And uh, the place where that is most likely to happen is reading passage three. That's the most difficult. In the general IELTS, uh, the section three is one reading passage that's very similar to the academic. In the academic, uh, the reading passage three tends to be the most challenging uh, topic. So we're going to tackle one of these challenging, difficult passage threes from the academic today. Even if you're a general IELTS student, hang out. You will learn lots and you will get lots of strategy and practice. So again, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com on both of those websites. We have lots and lots of materials to help you improve your English, your communication, and of course, your band scores. We have lots of reading help available. This is our academic website. You just need to click that big red button to get our premium package, spend a couple dollars to save lots of money and to learn from great materials. Uh, we are a British Council IELTS Registration Center in Saudi Arabia, and we are certified British Council agents. Our general IELTS website has the green background. You can click that big red button uh, to join us there, okay? All right, students, let's get back to it. So uh, get our apps, Academic IELTS Help app, links to ahelp.com, General IELTS Help app, links to gieltshelp.com. If you have questions, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com, and I will gladly answer your questions. So right now we have reading tomorrow, everyone. I will have a task one writing for you, so that's something kind of fun to look forward to. Um, and uh, right now we'll get into some reading. So for the reading, the first uh, tip that I have, okay, so tip one is read the title and look carefully at the picture if one is provided. And that's exactly uh, what we're going to have today, let me just um, get us the right passage here. Um, here we go, uh, just a sec. All right, there we go. There's that picture I was looking for. Okay. So uh, here is the reading passage three, four today. Uh, we have the title, Physalia Physalis. Hmm, okay, what is that? Uh, even if you are a native English speaker, at this point you're probably scratching your head going, what is a Physalia Physalis? Okay, uh, definitely academic IELTS students, be prepared that you can get a title that even if you have perfect English and use it since your childhood, uh, you might not be familiar with the passage topic uh, because Academic IELTS is also testing how well you can do with new information in college and university. Everybody got that? So especially academic IELTS, but even general IELTS section three is testing how well you can do with new information in the English language, even if you have really good English skills. Okay, so again, just a quick note about that. Keep in mind that passage three or section three however you want to think about it, um, often will test your ability to comprehend um, new knowledge in English, okay? So they can throw one of these topics at you that's kind of new for everybody, okay? 
All right, so you have to use logic, you have to use strategy. That is my first or second uh, big point here is you have to use logic, you have to use strategy, okay? So you're looking at Fizalia Fizalis, and uh, of course they try to help you visually, especially when you have this kind of a kind of strange or unfamiliar topic, and they give you a picture, and they will go, okay, there's a picture, um, that'll help you. Uh, so Oa says, it's a jellyfish, okay? Uh, Sandeep says, it's the biological name of a jellyfish, maybe? Okay, so you start thinking about it. So what is it? Good. And many of you are on the right path. So you're thinking, what is this? And you're answering, it is about a jellyfish. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. Um, why does the author introduce this jellyfish? Uh, what do you think? So this is your logical, your critical thinking. So this is exactly what any person, even with a very high level of English, would have to do to get a good score on this passage is to think and process this information. <clears throat> so the next question I would ask from myself if I sat the aisles and saw this question is, why does, why does the author talk about this jellyfish? What is it? No worries on and happy Lunar New Year to you as well, Un. Um, so why? Gus Audit says, oh, because it's, it, maybe it's unique. Okay. Um, Abhishek says to discover the nature of this animal and its ecosystem. Yeah, so I would say unique is a good guess. Absolutely. Gus Audit, that's a very nice answer. So Gus says, uh, likely because this jellyfish is quite unique and interesting to learn about. Absolutely. All right. I think that's very clever thinking, Gus. Good for you. So the next question, of course, is how might this jellyfish be unique? How might the author discuss this? Okay, and of course, keep looking at that picture while you're thinking about this. So here is this unique looking. It obviously looks pretty unique, right? Tahira, welcome to our group of members. Make sure to send me an email so I can hook you up with those videos and exams. And I look forward to having you in those members chat classes as well. Tahira, welcome aboard. All right, so how is this? Uh... Okay, Arda says, maybe it's healthy for the human body if we eat it. Parth says, maybe physically it's different. It definitely looks different than your average uh, jellyfish. Uh, Tanya says, perhaps it's close to extinction. Uh, Chatel says, maybe the skin is irritating when contacted. Mm -hmm, possibly, so it could be poisonous. Uh, Creation says, well, look at it. It's half outside the ocean and half inside the ocean. Yeah, that's very different. Okay, so think, uh, think science. Okay, so it's uh, physiology is unique it's in and out of the ocean okay um it's maybe poisonous okay sure all right um and when you think of living organisms always think about the uh, kind of metadata, the big data, right? Um, it may have some unique uh, behaviors, eating, uh, sleeping habits, or reproduction habits, right? Quite possibly. Okay, good. Now, uh, when you gather this information, so when you think about this what, why, how, when you look at the title and look at the picture, you're going to have a much better chance to figure out the content of the passage. So very good. This is what we want to do. So read the, the title, look at this, and think about it. For this kind of 
a question. It would be a really, really bad idea to just start reading and then hope to understand what's going on. Is everybody clear on that? So if you see a passage in IELTS where the title and the picture are like, whoa, I've never seen that before. It's a really bad idea to just start reading and not actually think about it and try to have an idea of what could be the content of the information. Okay, because then it's going to start as a little bit of confusion and then it will become more confusion and even more confusion. And then by the time you read through it, you're just gonna be like, what? And if you try to just skim read or scan or search for answers, you're going to be completely lost. It's going to be like, is this even English or am I looking at Latin? Okay. So definitely don't just get into something. Okay. It's like if you have a new tool or a new object, you don't know what it's used for. You don't just pick it up and start throwing it or hitting something with it. Okay, we're not monkeys anymore in that sense, but we think about it logically, right? Okay, sometimes that works, but <laughs> might, might not be the best idea, especially if you're holding a million dollar Fabergé egg to go, oh, what is this? Bang, bang, bang. Um, well, it's shiny. It's got a lot of detail. Maybe it's a valuable Russian jewel of history that could be worth millions of dollars. So I'm not going to crack it open and see if there's a little baby duck inside. It's a Fabergé egg. Hey, um, okay. Jokes aside, uh, next step, um, is, uh, let's look at some questions. Okay. So questions also help you to figure out <laughs> fun. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, so um, questions help you to figure out uh, a little bit more about the passage. So infer some more uh, information as well. So here, the first set of questions uh, is sentence completion. Okay, so it's a sentence completion type. You have to basically read the sentence and put in your answer. This type of question, definitely somewhere in the passage for the answer. So this will help you uh, to understand the passage. It's good to read these. So read them. If there are new words, it's not 100% clear. That's okay. Just read it. Okay. So 27. The Portuguese man of wars, some things acts as both a defense and an attack mechanism. Okay. Uh, Nomius has a something to the man of wars attack. Okay. This man of war is definitely something interesting here. It looks like this Portuguese man of war is maybe a name for this jellyfish or creature. Okay. I'm starting to kind of figure that out. All right. Now, if some of you are thinking, oh, this is really tough. Well, keep in mind, academic IELTS is used for uh, English assessments for master's and doctorate students to universities as well, right? So it shouldn't be a surprise, but that doesn't mean you can't do a good job. You absolutely can, okay? Uh, so let's keep reading. Nomius is also a very competent something which helps it uh, stay safe, helps keep it safe from the man of war. Okay. So I'm reading about two things here, Nomvius and man of war. Uh, so now I at least know that there's two types of organisms that I will discover in this passage. Okay. Um, although they initially look like a jellyfish, the man of war is really a something. The role of the something is as a sexual organ. Nombius' ability to live around the poisonous something of the man of war is not fully understood. Hmm. Okay. Now, next set of questions. So whatever I got from that, fine. Whatever I didn't, no big deal. Okay, next set of questions. Complete each sentence with the correct ending A to I below. Write the correct letter A to I in boxes 33 to 36 on the answer sheet. Good. Now here I have four phrases. That's half of the sentence. And then I have, whoa, nine choices. Okay. I'm not going to read these because there's obviously some extra information that can confuse me. So all I do is I read the phrases that are the questions because I know that this information is in the passage. Okay. 
So one really important strategy for good reading technique is to only read question information that is in the passage. Everybody good on that? So that's a really important tip. Never read information that might not be in the passage because it will be confusing and it's unnecessary. You might never need that information, so it's a complete waste of time as well as confusing. Okay, Nasir says, I got it. Okay, honey, Abhishek, Hoas on board, Mahmoud, good. Okay, good. So never read unnecessary information. So here we go. Uh, the relationship between the two creatures is best described as. Anybody know the scientific way to say relationship between two creatures? If you're studying biology, I think this word comes up in many different languages as well. So what's another way to say relationship between two creatures in science? Uh, Raghav says communism. Not really. But good try, Raghav. Uh, Raghav says synergistic. A closer. We're talking about biological organisms here. Kashir says a reaction. No, it is a scientific word. Um, Lokendra says mutualism. No, but Alpha got it. And Agata got it. Agata and Alpha both say symbiosis. Symbiosis, yeah. So, symbiosis, okay? So, symbiosis, okay? Togetherness of biological organisms working. Symbiosis. So, the symbiosis is best described as... Okay, symbiosis, good. So while you're reading these questions, really be active. And if you can think of other ways to think about the questions, that's really good. Okay, it's symbiosis, symbiosis. So every living creature has symbiosis because we all depend on other creatures, humans as well. Of course, we have lots of bacteria and even different kinds of fungus living in our body that helps us survive, right? Um, okay, so uh, 34, while the nomius is resistant to the venom, uh, what's another way to say venom? Okay, this is where definitely some vocabulary comes in helpful. So what's another way to say venom? Okay. Should, this is a little bit easier, I think, than my last question. That was a, yeah, very good part. Poison. Yeah, poison. Okay. So at home, when you're doing your reading exercises, you definitely want to uh, paraphrase, find different ways to say these words. You're building your vocabulary. You're also uh, getting a deeper understanding of the passage and you're training your brain to process information. Okay, so very good. All right, so the Nambius is swimming patterns something. For the Nambius, man of war also serves as. Okay, good. So uh, here we have some multiple choice for 37 and 38. Uh, for multiple choice, what information is in the passage? Just the question. The answers, three of the four are definitely not because you only have one of four. Okay, so here we go. Uh, the Nambius' main mechanism of defense is, all right, so the primary system to protect itself, right? So here again, I'm paraphrasing the Nambius' main primary mechanism system of defense of protection. Okay, so protection, all right? Primary system of protection. So different ways to think about it helps you to digest the information, right? Uh, number 38, what does Nomius generally use to propel itself? So what is used by Nomius usually to move around? All right, and then we have two more questions. Why not, since we're having so much fun with multiple choice put in, Two yes, no, not given questions. Yes, no, not given. 
Don't read them. They don't make sense until you read the passage. Okay. Uh, Mahmoud al-Rahal, good paraphrasing. Okay. Um, the main system of defending for the novice is. Okay. And it's nice grammatical paraphrasing, Mahmoud. Uh, Bakrat, yeah, good. There was, I read that. It needed a bit of uh, grammatical correction there as well. Okay, cool. So now we have an even better understanding of what we're going to do. Okay, uh, some of you are probably thinking, oh boy, Adrian, uh, I mean, 20 minutes, um, it's not enough time. I can't do this. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can. Okay, so 20 minutes is lots of time. Uh, th these thoughts, uh, these strategies that I discussed so far, they happen quickly. Okay, so when you practice at home, this happens fast, all right? Now, um, so quickly just jumping back here, okay? Uh, 20 minutes is lots of time. It is 1,200 seconds. Count that much and you will see. Um, with the right strategies, you can read and answer the questions with 70% confidence or more, uh, which will lead to band seven or more, okay? Um, there are a lot of bad ideas out there about how to do well in the reading section, especially the academic reading. Uh, skimming and scanning, searching and underlining keywords, those are band six strategies. Everybody needs to be 100% clear on that. And uh, here is something kind of, I don't want to say funny, but interesting. Some student says, well, I was skimming and scanning and, and I was underlining words and I got band 6.5. And I'm always kind of like, eh, but you know, that means your English is probably good enough that if you did other strategies, not skimming and scanning and underlining, then you probably would have gotten 7.5 or more. So if anybody's like, well, I can get 6.5 skimming and scanning. Yeah, that means you can probably get more if you're reading. Okay. It's just, it's the way the test is designed. All right. Now with this kind of a topic, um, what else should you do? Tushara, I will show you true, false, not given at the, at the end of the class, okay? So uh, with this kind of a passage, what else should you immediately be thinking while you're reading? There's something very important that you should be doing here, okay? It's very, very important tip strategy here. Strategy. With this type of passage, or let's say information, which is physical, like an animal, you should immediately remember to, yeah, that's right, Abhishek, visualize, right? So imagine it, okay, visualize, to visualize. So what should you see in this case? In this case, you should see that you. So what should you line up here? What should you do? What should you imagine? What would be a good way to, to immediately think, okay, this is what I'm going to see. That's going to help me to understand this passage and just do a better job. Also to focus so my brain doesn't get all bleh and uh, mushy and forget what I'm reading. So what should you see? Okay. There's a kind of an answer here that you should kind of think about. Uh, this is what we teach in our strategies on our websites. We teach very unique uh, skills that really are effective. Okay, so Abhishek says, I'm swimming with the jellyfish. Janil says, I'm a diver in the ocean. All right. All right, let's take it that one step further, everyone. Let's take it one step further. So, All right, 
So I am the jellyfish. Okay. There I am. That's me. Okay. Okay, it's Adrian. That's my mustache and my beard. And I'm the jellyfish. Boop ba doo. Okay, my tentacles. Ah, now the passage is way more interesting, and I'm going to really pay attention to what I'm reading, try to figure it out. I'm that I'm that Portuguese man of war. Okay, so I'm the jellyfish. All right, um, so get into it, make it your own, make it interesting, be connected, be connected. All right, so that's what you want to do. You're the jellyfish. You're the Physalia physalis. Okay. All right, uh, so let's see who I am. Uh, let's see what happens to me. Let's see what I do. Let's read, let's visualize, let's picture this, okay? If it's a bit tricky, there's some long words, don't worry about it. Focus on what you do know, okay? All right, um, so here we go from the top, let's do this. Uh, Physalia physalis, common name, Portuguese man of war, is a unique species of the class Hydrozoa. If you can't read words like hydrozoa, you don't know how to pronounce it, whatever, don't worry about it. Uh, several characteristics distinguish this species. Oh, by the way, students, this is a reading class, so read, don't just listen to me, okay? Listening is fine, but read, it's better. All right, uh, the physalia physalis is a free-floating communal polyp. Its powerful poison serves as a defense and attack for the species. One type of fish, however, has developed a high level of immunity to this toxin. The Nombias granvi is capable of withstanding injections of Physalia venom 10 times the normal strength of that which kills other fishes. Due to this resistance to the venom and exceptional swimming, the two organisms have evolved to form a commensal relationship with one another. Even though we apply the term commensalism to the symbiosis between these two animals, the nature of interaction is not exactly fitting of the term. As defined by Campbell and Reese, commensalism is when one organism receives benefits while neither harming nor helping the other in any significant way. By looking closely at the behavior, physiology, and symbiosis between Physalia physalis and Nomius granvi, we find out the reason for this misleading terminology. Okay, so here I'm picturing myself uh, as this uh, group of polyps, I'm this jellyfish floating, and I have a relationship with a fish, okay? So again, um, it's that uh, visualization, right? So here I am, I'm gonna speed the drawing up a bit here. So here I am, this jellyfish, and uh, hi, and there's uh, the fish, okay? Um, hi, all right, we're hanging out. Um, what do we do for each other? How do we work together? What happens with us, all right? So it's the introduction, it's the introduction of a beautiful friendship. Uh, between me and this fish. All right, I've got that much. If I didn't understand every word, that's okay. As long as I got this idea that me and this fish, we hang out and uh, I'm poisonous. So I've got some, some moves, some deadly venom um, and I can attack and, um, and defend myself. But the, this little fish is, uh, he's got armor. Okay, he's got, a, he's got a shield. All right, and he can kind of defend against my deadly attacks. This is a sword here, all right? So yeah, he can, uh, he can defend, so he's good, okay? All right, so I got that much information, I've visualized that much information, um, and I read on, okay? Everybody's with me hopefully so far. And most of you hopefully have gotten this much information out of the introduction, me and the fish. The fish has got some good defense, I've got some good offense, and we kind of get along, okay? All right, um, so let's 
Let's go back here. Now, another important point before I really get into it, uh, notice that from here, this is the introduction, so this is what we just read. Um, what sentence is this? So the last sentence of the introduction, what is this? What is this called in essay writing? And you should know this for task two essay writing. It's very important. Okay, so what is this part of the introduction called? The introductory paragraph. You need to be able to write this for a good task to mark the same way as the author is writing it for. Thank you, Mandeep. It's the thesis, yeah. Um, and of course, because it's a good thesis, it tells me a couple of important ideas. That this essay is going to talk about the behavior, the physiology, and the symbiosis of these animals. Okay, so behavior, physiology, maybe in this order. Okay, maybe physiology first um, about these uh, organisms. So that's very important to know. Everybody got that? Okay, if you don't know this, learn it. It's very important. So uh, very important tip here. Okay, especially for those academic IELTS students. So always, I'm going to capitalize this, uh, pay very careful attention to the thesis uh, statement of the introductory uh, paragraph as uh, this will give you lots of information about the structure and content of the passage. Okay? Everybody's got that? It's super important, super, super important. Okay, so let me erase that. So from this thesis statement that I just showed you, I know that this passage will talk about the behavior, the physiology, and the symbiosis or the connection between these two animals. Okay, super. It's like a lot of people have that now. So let's go on. So no surprise that this paragraph, the first body paragraph, starts with the physiology. Okay, let's do it. All right, so the physiology of Physala, Physalia physalis is unique. At first glance, they appear to be jellyfish, but the Portuguese man of war is actually a polyp or a community of polyps belonging to the order Siphonophora, which gets its common name uh, from its resemblance to an old Portuguese warship. I think somebody in the chat was saying, oh, that's a warship. That's a, that's a type of boat. Yeah, it tells you that right here. That's why it's called a man of war because it looks like that Portuguese warship. The man of war floats with a gas filled blue to pink translucent body called a pneumatophore, a part of a single polyp. This crest like pneumatophore, which may attain a length of 20 centimeters, acts as a sail and is aligned so that the colony sails at 45 degrees to the wind direction. Polyps connect tentacles, which are located on the ventral surface of the float. There are three types of specialized polyps. Dactylozoids that find and catch prey with poisonous stingers called nematocysts. Gonozoids that reproduce and gastrozoids that digest the food like a stomach. These fishing tentacles, sometimes as long as 50 meters, hang down like a drift net, combing the water for prey. Wow, so I am a pretty amazing, um, I am a pretty amazing uh, jellyfish indeed, or polyp. Okay, uh, so here I'm picturing what I look like. All right, and I can imagine that I'm made up of these different types of polyps. Okay. All right, so I keep reading, and uh, now, oh, there we go, we jump to the next creature, the Nomvius granvi, our typical fish belonging to the ray fin fishes of the class Osteochythes. The fins, supported by long, flexible rays, are modified for maneuvering. So now my little buddy, the fish is being described here, I'm picturing that, defense and other functions. 
The length of this fish at maturity is about 8 centimeters. The nature of the ability of Nomius to live among the venomous tentacles of Physalia has been likened to that of the relationship between sea anemones and anemone fishes. This immunity is not yet fully understood. Okay. So, again, keeping that visualization. The relationship between Physalia, aha, now the relationship. So now the symbiosis. The relationship between Physalia and Nomius is arguably harmful to both organisms. They mutually benefit from one another, but at the same time, the symbiosis can be quite damaging to both creatures. Ah, so it's a love-hate relationship. In this sense, the relationship could be better defined as one of mutualism and parasitism. The mutualism, both uh, in mutualism, both organisms benefit. In parasitism, one organism benefits at the expense of the host. Mm hmm. All right. Let's keep reading. All right. We're going along here again. Keep picturing. So it's me, this fish. This is what I look like. This is what the fish looks like. This is how we get along with each other. Okay. Everybody got that structure so far visually? So introduction. Here we have a type of, let's call it a jellyfish for now, and we have a type of fish. Introduction, hey, they're important, they hang out with each other. This is what the jellyfish, what I look like, this is what the fish looks like, this is how they work together, okay? It's logic, the author follows logic, all right? Now, it won't be a surprise that the author explains this relationship. Um, when the nomius is weak, it may no longer be able to withstand the venom of the nematocysts. In one study, a freshly expired nomius was offered to the physalia. The carcass was immediately stung, taken hold of by a dactylozoid, and brought up to the gastrozoids. The nomius, although resilient to the toxin, is not 100% immune. In the same study, the live nomias began swimming more erratically and moved towards the carcass as the gastrozoids formed their characteristic bag and began to digest the fish. The live nomias was then caught on the left side of one of the largest dactylozoids. This behavior clearly indicates how the symbiosis may deviate from the definition provided by commensalism. That's one side of the story. On the other hand, the nomius has two distinct gains from its innate behavior with Physalia. As an experiment demonstrated, upon introduction, the nomius initially swam near the surface and around the Physalia in a large circular pattern in both clockwise and counterclockwise directions. This action protects the fish from attack. Most predatory fishes of Nombius therefore avoid the man of war or sustain serious injury and often death. Second, the Physalia provides a food source for the Nombius. In the mentioned experiment, about 15 minutes after the release, the Nombius swam closer to the Physalia, paused as if inspecting it, and then began to nip the edges of the gonozoids. Physalia is able to regenerate the tentacles, and so this ingestion is rarely fatal to the organism. All right, so now we have both sides of the coin. I'm guessing what's coming now is some sort of a kind of conclusion or an explanation here of this relationship. Let's keep reading. Nombius's capacity, again, remember, read with me, nice and loud, from the top here. Nombius's capacity to survive near the poisonous tentacles of the manowar is partly due to the resilience of the toxin. The main reason for this skill is certain swimming behaviors. Instead of developing protective mucus, the fish depends on its swimming abilities as its main mechanism of defense. Aha, so it's a really good little swimmer, my buddy, the fish, while living in the venomous discharge of the physalia. The Nombius fish can maneuver with precision to avoid stinging nematocysts. This is the case whether the Physalia is stationary or in motion. Rayfin fishes have a physiology which enables maneuverability. The fish display a relative ease in maintaining a safe distance from the dactylozoids, even with absurd sharp changes in direction. 
Nomia specimens use the pectoral fins for the propulsion, while pelvic fins are spread like a fan. The caudal fin is apparently used for only short, fast darts. This swimming behavior appears to be well suited for existence with physalia. It is therefore apparent that rather than developing an ability to inhibit the discharge of physalia nematocysts or prevent them from stinging, Nomius uses its swimming abilities as its primary means of defense while living in the venomous drift net of physalia. Taking into consideration all of the interactions involved in the symbiotic relationship of these two organisms, the appropriate term to assign is difficult. The facts state that the commensalism of these two aquatic creatures is one which incorporates beneficial as well as harmful factors depending on the circumstance. It is this alternation of prey-predator roles of Physali and Nomius that creates a definitive difficulty. Perhaps the best term we can apply for the moment is that of commensalism, given that both animals receive some benefit at varying times during the relationship. Whew. Okay, so that reading is a mouthful, and maybe not everybody understood 100%, but again, that's okay. As long as you got the main ideas from each paragraph and you visualized it, well, let's see how we do with these questions. So... Here we go with the filling in the blanks. Usually these kind of come in the order of the passage, okay? And we're looking for words from the passage. So the instructions say choose no more than two words from the passage for each answer, okay? Here we go, number 27. The Portuguese man of war's something acts as both as a defense and an attack mechanism. I think we read enough that we can probably figure this out without looking back. What is it? What's the right answer here? <clears throat> so what comes to mind? And again, even though the passage might seem really difficult, the answers aren't necessarily that difficult in the IELTS. It's not going to be the same level of difficulty for the questions as in university. Okay, Vishnu says venom, Arda agrees. Yeah, so um, if you write uh, nematocysts, um, that might be accepted alpha. Gineal tentacles, no, because the amount of war has different types of tentacles and not all of them are used for, um, uh, for defense. So careful, tentacles would not be okay. So venom or poison, okay? Venom is a good answer here. So the Portuguese man of war's venom acts as both a defense and attack. So it protects itself with this venom and it attacks with this venom. Okay. All right. Uh, Nombius, so this is the fish, has a something to the man of war's attack. So something to the venom. Uh, what do you think the word is? So what would be the correct word here? And you might go back and check this, um, but it's good to have an idea before you start searching. So you never want to just blindly search the, the text, okay? So Alpha Forest says some kind of a resistance or a resilience. Yeah, and again, we can go back and check that. So we can think protection, resistance, okay. So this was somewhere near the beginning, obviously. Okay, it's going to be somewhere probably the introduction and the physiology. Okay. All right. So here we have that first part of Nombius. Now, the nice thing about having uh, these unique names is that they're easy to look for. So it's kind of like... You know, looking at the name like Physalia Physalis is scary at first, but when it comes to the questions, it can be helpful because you can search quickly for that. Uh, so Nomius Gromba is capable of withstanding um, injections of Physalis venom due to this resistance to the venom. So here it is, resistance to the venom. So very good. Immunity, I think, would also be okay. They would take that, uh, that as well. The best answer is resistance because they're not completely immune, as we read, uh, but they are resistant. 
I think it said 10 times um, more resistant than other fish. So resistance. All right, uh, Nombius is also a very competent something which helps keep it safe. Now here I don't need to go back for a band nine level student definitely, or even a band 6.5. For this one, you don't need to go back. Is a very competent what? A very competent, this has to be a noun, not a verb. Very good, Tushar. Very good, Alpha. Very nice, yeah. So the correct uh, word here is the noun. I can see that from the grammar, okay? Um, that this fish is a very competent swimmer. Very good, Sandy. Okay, very competent swimmer. Nombius is a very competent swimmer. Okay, not swimming, swimmer which helps keep it safe from the man of war. Okay. He is a swimmer. She is a swimmer. Okay. Knows how to swim. Very good. All right. Um, although they initially look like a jellyfish, the man of war is really a uh, something. All right. So this one, um, I remember that one of the paragraphs talks about the physiology so I can look back because I remember from the thesis that it was in the beginning. Uh, Samuel and Odikan agree that it's a polyp. Okay, so let me just go back. And that was somewhere when we we're talking about the physiology of... Okay, uh, so the physiology is unique. At first glance, they appear to be a jellyfish but the Portuguese man of war is actually a polyp. Okay, a polyp. So polyp is good. P O L Y P. It's a type of animal. It's like uh, kind of like saying um, felines, which includes tigers and cats and uh, lions and so on. Okay, so polyp. Very good. So it looks like a jellyfish, but it's really a polyp. Yeah. Okay, uh, number 31, the role of the something is as a sexual organ. So here uh, it's talking about one part of this animal, this um, Portuguese man of war. And I remember again that this was also in this section with the physiology. So uh, we're still in the very beginning here, okay? And I remember it was saying that there's a few different p types of organisms together here. So the man of war floats with a gas-filled blue translucent body. And then it talks about these kind of interesting words here in the brackets, right? So there are three types of specialized polyps, dactylozoids that find and catch prey. Let me bring it down a bit. Um, with poisonous stingers called nematocysts, gonozoids that reproduce. Aha, so there it is. Notice how it doesn't say sexual organ anywhere. You have to find the paraphrase. So it's paraphrasing, it's gonozoids, right? Um, and this is a good uh, example of where skimming and scanning doesn't work. You have to have an idea of the passage to answer it. All right. So, gonozoid. Okay, careful with the spelling. Once you find it, don't make a mistake with the spelling, all right? Get it right. Okay, uh, Nombius's ability to live around the poisonous something of the man of war. Now here, I think uh, one of our members said this answer for the beginning, but it would be better here. So the poisonous what? Again, it's a noun that we're looking for here. Um, it's living around the poisonous what? Think of octopus. Okay, you shouldn't have to search for this. Okay, tentacles. Tentacles, yes, absolutely, tentacles. Okay, 
So venom resistance, swimmer, polyp, gonozoids, and tentacles. All right. Beautiful. Okay. So now uh, we need to complete each sentence with the correct ending A to I below. Write the correct letter A to I in boxes 33 to 36 on your answer sheet. So here the trick for this type of question is to first think about the answer on your own and then second to match that with the right choice. Okay, so here we go everyone. Number 33, uh, the relationship between the two creatures is best described as what? How would you finish that sentence? So the relationship between these two creatures is best described as what? I have a clear idea because it talked about that a lot in the second half of the essay. So it is best described. Uh, Kashir, so that's just one side. Parasitic and commensal. Bad or good? OS, I love it. So OS kept it really simple. So OS said it's best described as bad and good, right? Uh, they help each other and they eat each other. Okay, <laughs> right? So let's see which one is the closest match. See, it doesn't have to be complex. And OS, that was clever thinking. Just keep it simple. It's bad and good or bad or good, right? Uh, which one uh, is bad or good or bad and good? Which one matches the best here? Which one is the closest to bad and or good from the choices? Vishnu, Kashirsha, Samuel, Abhishek, very good, yeah. Mutualistic, good. Parasitic, bad. Bad and good. Okay, uh, G, yeah. So in your answer sheet, you put the letter G and you move on. Uh, while the nonvious is resistant to the venom, it something. How would you finish that? So while the nonvious is resistant to the venom, it something. Okay. It what? Finish it with your own idea. And again, think about it. Yeah, very good, Vishnu. Vishnu says it's not fully immune, right? Because we had that example where the manivore actually stings and eats um, the older fish, right? So it's not fully immune. So while the novice is resistant to the venom, it's not fully immune. It's not 100% uh, safe, right? Very good, Vishnu. Very, very nice. Yeah, Sandeep, it sometimes may be dangerous for the fish. Yeah, very nice, Sandeep. That's it, keeping it simple, right? Um, which one is the closest match? Notice, Vishnu, how your clever thinking will get you the correct answer here, right? So while it is resistant, so while it can withstand that venom, yeah, it's not totally immune. It could be dangerous for the fish, right? So E, okay? Uh, the nonvious swimming patterns, okay, I'm going to do it now, so just follow with me. So the nonvious swimming patterns helps protect it from the Portuguese man of war. Uh, there it is right away. I can see it very quickly. Protects the fish from attack, right? Uh, we read lots of information on that. So notice how the questions and answers aren't as scary, even when the passage looks scary. But if you panic when you see a difficult passage, everything will become difficult. So a really important point here, students, is when you see a passage that looks intimidating, that looks like the topic is really challenging, don't panic. Stay calm. Focus on strategy, okay? Uh, for the Nambius, Man of War also serves as... A food source because it eats it. It eats the tentacles sometimes. So, 
Uh, sexual mate? No, that would be pretty weird. Um, peaceful and friendly? Doesn't? Eh, maybe not. Um, oh, hey, a source of food. There it is. A source of food. So for the nomius, yeah, they both serve as food for each other, right? Depending on the situation. One day one eats one, the other day the other eats the other, right? So that was the parasitic part of the relationship. So um, really an interesting uh, read here and, and passage. I'm going to um, just jump over the multiple choice. I'll show you these. You can figure the multiple choice out later on your own time. Uh, with multiple choice, it's the same strategy that I just showed you. You read the uh, question or the phrase, you think about the answer, and then you make the choice. So here are the two multiple choice questions. Figure those out. You can email your answers to me later. And I just want to do the true, false, not given. I know one of you are really waiting for this true, false, not given. So I'll show you how to do this nice and fast. So number 39, Nambius and Fizalia relationship is known to be uh, destructive. Okay. So um, here uh, it's yes, no, not given. So it agrees or disagrees with the passage. So first of all, is it important to know this relationship for this passage? Is it given or is it not given? Well, this whole passage discusses a lot about this relationship. So um, yeah, it's definitely given. And is it known to be destructive? Um, not really, because for the most part, uh, they tend to get along. So they provide food for each other and protection for each other. So I'm going to go with a no. The no is stronger than a yes in this case. So no, it's not destructive. It's mostly symbiotic. They live with each other. Okay. Uh, number 40, the chief reason why Nomius exists is to act as commensalism with Physalia. So the main reason this fish is on the earth is to live together with this jellyfish. Uh, is that important? The main reason for this fish to live on the earth? No, and it's kind of strange. I don't think the author would know this information. So I'm just going to go with not given. It's awkward and it's unknown. Uh, usually when you have a statement that's awkward and unknown, it's going to be a not given. It's not important for the passage. Or if it is important and unknown, it's not given. You can't give information on what you don't know. So not given. So no, not given. Okay. All right, everyone. Unfortunately, that's all the time I have for today. But I will be back tomorrow. Um, and tomorrow I will have a task one writing. I'm not sure yet what a diagram or a graph or a table uh, for you. We'll do a band nine essay together. We'll do task two finish with members before that. And um, what's really important, everyone, again, I just want you to remember this is don't panic when you see a tough topic like this because the questions aren't going to be the same as you would see in a university exam. So if you understand 60-70% of the passage, you can still do a really good job. Okay. All right, everyone. That's it. Uh, for lots more tips and strategies, uh, we are world leaders when it comes to IELTS exams. Check us out on aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general worth spending a couple dollars and saving yourself a lot of headache and time and absolutely getting those maximum band scores that you can. You're very welcome, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. If it's late in your country, uh, get some sleep, get some rest, wake up tomorrow positive. Remember, you're all beautiful, smart people. Just keep pushing forward. Much love to all of you from Central Europe. Bye for now.